Welcome back to another episode of Rock the Dragon, where we celebrate everything Dragon Ball while giving you recaps of Dragon Ball Super, the latest episodes of which we'll be covering episode 129, 130, and 131, rounding up the series, and then diving into Dragon Ball Fighters, the yes. segment where we talk about the game and uh, hopefully have some new uh, additions to our crew, which you'll find out here in a little bit. But first, let's go ahead and talk about Dragon Ball Super and get everyone caught up and uh, discuss the dramatic, fantastic finale of Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, man, it's crazy because like this episode, just there's so much for us to talk about, honestly. And I know everyone was watching. I know you guys like all finished, and it was it was nuts. It was super nuts. I think we should go into Goku and Goku going to place, finally obtaining and mastering Ultra Instinct. That's, I mean, it's crazy to think that Goku was able to get to a brand new level of power and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jiren, which we talked about a little bit, but like yeah. things went to all new heights of yeah, craziness, yeah. They right? Yeah, next level. They just were blowing crap up, literally knew we know what was going on. And we still know very little. Even as a series like finishes up, we still know very little about the UI form like mm -hmm. as a whole. We know yeah. it's silver, we know it's super-duper strong, and that's pretty much it, more or less. I mean, it's tough. I, I'm impressed to see that Goku is able to kind of jump up to a whole new form and master it, like you said, but this whole time, all I really wanted, more than anything, was just for Jiren to win. Even even when Goku reaches like a whole new transformation, because we've seen that many times, right? right? It's the same old Dragon Ball trope. Every single time there's an enemy, yeah. they be pushes the, the good guys to yep. their limit, yep. they reach a new transformation mid-fight, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, something happens dramatically, and then the good guy, like, wins. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's just the anime trope, period. Like, yeah. every time it's just like, oh, you can't defeat me? It's like, no, my family. Uh, and then everyone blows up, and then everyone gets excited, right? Um, but... I did like that they started fleshing out Jiren as a character. Yeah. Dude, the voice actor, like, for Jiren, <laughs> like, he was legendary. I'm, I'm so happy because now that he was able to be, like, essentially, like, out of his shell and, like, actually, like, you know, have the, the grunts of scream, like, Jiren is going all out. There's more expressions in the character. There's more of, like, kind of talking about his backstory. And I love that. You know, I still feel like there could have been more answers. Yeah. Some of those answers actually are in the manga, too. But um, I think if you wrap up all that story, it's more cohesive and it's more like, okay, we know why this guy is doing what he's doing. We still don't know why he's so damn strong. I right. don't know that. Right. <laughs> but it's like, it was still a thing where he's just like crazy character. And um, But yeah, the fighting was awesome. I love that they took time to make sure that the animation was justified for that kind of skill. A lot more crisp yes, this time. Absolutely. absolutely. Like I, I, so throughout the whole fight, it's great to see like we have the typical, again, another Dragon Ball trope is you have an enemy who's holding back, right? He gets uh, pushed to his limits as well once he see this new transformation that a Saiyan has, in this case Goku, and yeah. then you know goes to that whole new level of strength so they can really just like bang at it. Yeah. But if you think about such uh, classic epic fights like Goku versus Frieza on planet Namek, it'd be very difficult to support Frieza's motivations there. Like obviously Goku had won many fights before that, mm -hmm. but you don't support Frieza because he's a bad guy, he doesn't really have great uh, uh, aspirations. He just wants to destroy everything. It's just it felt right. awkward and yeah. weird. This time around, as we've seen so many times over, Goku or Vegeta always kind of come on top. They save the world. It's usually Goku. And this time, you're thinking like, okay, I, at least for me, I didn't feel bad rooting for Jiren as he yeah. was able to go up against yeah, Goku because exactly. like he has his own reasons. He's not a villain. They might be a little bit selfish, his motivations. But honestly, no matter what, whether Goku's saving his friends or not, it's always a selfish motivation too, right? He's a Saiyan. He wants to fight. He right. wants to be the strongest. Yeah. Really, Goku's like 50-50. He's thinking, okay, I can go against a super powerful enemy, and he can help push me to new levels of power and strength right. myself. But then there's also the whole, like, yeah, I can save my friends along the way. Right. So rooting for Jiren didn't feel... Uh, I, I didn't feel uncomfortable doing oh, yeah, it no, of course. the whole yeah. time. And then episode 129 wraps up with Goku uh, finally like getting that point where he shows off the, the silver glow and aura he has of the yeah. Ultra Instinct form. And then yeah, episode the master, 130 yeah. is just all about like their fight and really what that, that uh, transformation can do. Yeah. And being able to showcase that Goku had been uh, beaten and knocked around like crazy constantly throughout the fight with Jiren and then now he's like fully refreshed. Yeah, new, just destroying new, him. New appearance. Yeah. Let's go at this. And Jiren's fr frustrations also kind of helped move along the character development as well, like mm. you said. We learned a lot more about that character right, through right. Goku's pressuring right. him right. with his newfound strength right. and speed and power in the energy blast. And I think that that really helped this series come along. Yeah. 
I, I just, I don't know. There's been a lot of things with Dragon Ball Super that I was kind of iffy about, but the last two episodes in particular, episode 130 and 131, I think kind of saved it from itself. Yes, absolutely. I feel like all of, a lot of things were wrapped up. So, like, again, the animation, like, we all watch Dragon Ball, and you're like, what do you want to see? Like, we want to see a fight, right? right. Like, it's like when you're going to watch, like, an action flick, will they have the best story? Eh, probably not, but you want to see good action, all right? And so it's great to see the kind of all the animations and all the hype stuff that all of us love, you know, and have that showcased in such a fashion with good animations there. It's just great. That's what you want to see. Yep. That's what we're here for. Um, and even, too, I like there's one segment where you see that Goku's pissed because Jiren fires off a shot, you know, to, and basically says, like, oh, like, you people that you love, that you can like that your reason for fighting, they could disappear just like that. See so that like that caught me off guard. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't see that coming at all. I knew Jiren Jiren was selfish. I knew that he had his own reasons for wanting to win, and I knew that benefited his, his own universe. But he didn't care about that. But it was so weird, and I felt like for a brief moment, almost villainous of Jiren. Because what, what Bam's referring to, if you guys haven't seen the episode again, obviously, if you're watching this, spoilers. You messed up, yeah. Yeah, big time. <laughs> uh, but so Jiren and Goku, and they're fighting, and they're doing their thing. And Jiren has his own motivations for trying to win the fight. And yeah. he realizes in that moment that Goku is finding his strength and his motivation himself through his friends and right. family and the people that are sitting in the stands watching him. So for a really weird kind of breakaway of this whole, like, I want to win because of absolute power, he decided to, Jiren, decided to do an energy blast and, like, shoot it out into the stand. Mm -hmm. and almost kill everyone who's like chilling out there right. watching and spectating in the fight and Goku does this thing where he just jumps up in front and he knocks that blast aside and then yeah. Jiren kind of tells him like yeah these people like they're a crutch they're a weakness you take yeah. them away you can't be strong you take them away like you lose everything like I did when I was younger and having had no friends no family no connections at all with anybody helped me become strong so I think that's such a weird polar opposite. You're not dealing with good and evil. You're dealing with someone who's had the pain of loss, something that Goku talked about many yeah, times, right. the, about how to become a Super Saiyan, especially yeah. when with Gohan right, right during right. the Cell Saga, uh, to transform and to reach those new levels. Yeah, but for yeah. Jiren, it's like, I lost everything as a kid, and now the only thing that matters to me is making sure I never feel that pain again. Yeah. And he shuts everyone else out to do it, exactly. and he's trying to show Goku the same thing. Exactly. But it was it was a dark moment. That yeah. was very, very uh, unexpected for yeah, me. Yeah, but I, I like that, though, because, it, again, it gave more context to who he is, and mm -hmm. I felt that it wasn't so, like, I'm a villain, I'm trying to kill these people, because, I mean, clearly, if he was trying to, like, outright, like, just kill them, then he could have done something strong or anything. Sure. You know, it's more so a thing where it's, like, it's just as simple as that, and they can be gone. And I love that. It, I think it even ties into the whole idea of even when we had in, like, the whole Boo Saga, right? Where at the end of Boo Saga, Goku, like, he's like, oh, like, I'm going to go. Or, like, even, like, when he left when during the time of Gohan, right? And it was he left because uh, he's like, oh, yeah, you're selling all these kind of things. But I know that I have caused a lot of trouble. People have come to the Earth because of me. And also, at the end of the day, you guys need to learn how to defend yourselves. Right. And so I feel like it's that it's all kind of that it ties into that whole idea of the storyline that we really had for Dragon Ball Z. So I really like that. It, and on that note, because again, for some of the stuff that we have seen from this, like of course uh, for a lot of you guys, I'm sure you guys know this already, but Super is supposed to take place towards essentially like right before the last episode of Dragon Ball Z, and so. I thought it was sick because, again, like you said, it tied everything together. It tied everything together, and it made something that now, if you step back, it seemed like storyline. It seems more coherent as to the similar themes that they've been actually Put presenting. Put some context in, in that a little bit. Exactly. But let's talk about the final episode. See, man. this is where it's such a big deal. Because, yeah. like, you see episode 129 is Goku getting battered around, trying to right. figure stuff out, mastering UI at, like, the very last second. Yeah. And then episode 130 is just the battle with all that, getting some more kind of understanding of who Jiren is. But episode 131 has so much jam-packed into it that I was pleasantly surprised a handful of times, which is good, because I feel like throughout all of Dragon Ball Super, I'm like, okay, you know, it's Dragon Ball. I'm a huge fan. I love the show. Right. I love the episodes. Yeah. It has its shortcomings, but I'm still enjoying every minute of yep. it. But I'm never surprised. Like, yeah. I always felt like, okay, like, 
that was expected, except for maybe the Goku black reveal. Like, that was one thing that I was like, okay, I didn't see that coming. But this whole episode had, didn't see that coming, didn't see that coming, yeah, yeah. didn't see this coming, whoa, 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 like yeah. all across the board. Yep. And that, to me, I think showcases a really great understanding of how to wrap up, like, this portion of yeah. the series. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know where you want to start. There's a lot that we could talk about. Where, how do you want to take this? Because there's I mean, a lot of really big bullet points. Yeah, I mean, let's just go into the fact that freaking Frieza and, like, Android 17, like, exist. Like, how crazy is that? Like, it's so funny because you have Android 17 and he's just like, oh, yeah, it was a gambit. I'm here. <laughs> and it's just so funny because we all knew Frieza was still there. I Will. didn't. I didn't Wait, know that Frieza what? was here. Like, it, it, okay, so I'm, I thought about this as I was watching it. Like this episode, like episode 130, I'm watching that and I'm thinking, like, why isn't Frieza in the stands? Isn't he like defeated? Like, where is he at? Yeah. And then when, and then I was like, okay, maybe they're just not, you know, paying attention to his character, or whatever. Maybe he's just gonna be like sulking in the corner because he's like the bad guy on yeah. the team. So I ignored it. When he, when Frieza appears in his golden form to uh, take on Jiren and catch him off guard, I was like, holy crap, I forgot that Freeze was actually there. Like, this is, a, this, is a, this is a big deal. Yeah. And, and I think this, okay, first off, Frieza shows up at the nick of time. There's a very unique moment here, and I think it's very important to discuss this, is that Goku has totally, like, mastered the Ultra Instinct form, beaten the crap out of Jiren, like, yeah. actually, like, beat him to a pulp. Yeah. Jiren is laying there just flat out like Yamcha in this crater saying, yeah. you know what, just like, <laughs> just end it. Just knock me out of the ring. No, Jiren, like, Jiren is a man, okay? Okay, Jiren, that's right. At least, like, he wasn't like, Yamcha was curled up like a little baby. like Fetal uh, position, uh, like, yeah. Fetal position. At least Jiren was back. He tried to get up. That's true. Okay, man. all right. D gotta, gotta pay the respect Don't to the man. Don't disrespect him about Yamcha, disrespect man. Him. But like, but as you said, like a man, Jiren is laying out there, like completely defeated, saying, "Just finish it, let it just, just wrap this up." And Goku is walking up, all just totally badass. He's got yeah. his silver hair and flowing. He's like, he looks like he's barely taken any damage. That he could go maybe ten more rounds. And then out of nowhere, there's just this weird gut-wrenching sensation that, for me, I thought that he was getting blasted or attacked by another enemy, the way that the animation kind of showcased right, right. I'm like, who is out there in the ring, like, <laughs> taking out <laughs> Goku from behind? Like, what is going on here? Getting his snipers out. And then in that moment, it's revealed that the Ultra Instinct has taken such a toll that it completely incapacitates Goku yeah. and he crumbles to the floor. Right. Jiren finally is able to muster up just enough strength where he's going to finish Goku and end the match, and then out of nowhere, Frieza shows up and saves Goku in a probably a selfish way, I would have to imagine. Yeah. It's just, you know, for his own reasons, not right. because he wants to help Goku yeah. necessarily. And I was like, oh, word! Like, I didn't totally didn't even know he was there! Yeah. Totally <laughs> forgot! I was like, I thought he was defeated, but he's not. He's here, yeah. and he's gonna fight Jiren. And I was like, this is how it's supposed to be! I want to yeah. see someone other than Goku fight and win. Put, put the hands in a villain who's tried to destroy the Earth so many times, right. and now make him save the universe! Like, that was dope. Like, I was really excited about yeah. that. No, absolutely, absolutely. And like I said, man, my boy, Android 17, clearly the star of Dragon Ball Super in its oh. entirety, comes back, and I think for a lot of people, some people were just like, okay, this is kind of BS, but at the same time, they're like, it's Android 17. Okay. Well, I'm about that life. Like, I am okay with him being there, because you know what? This guy is the truth. He has been going through the whole series, and he's had, like, some of the greatest character development in this series. The I feel best! Super strong the for whatever reason that's going on. And, like, even, too, I think he also exemplifies a lot of the little nuances that, like, Dragon Ball Super was really great on in terms of having some more character development, having some stuff that's more fleshed out, having a character in which also try to learn a lot of techniques, right? And utilize different techniques in different ways. We don't usually really see that so much from Dragon Ball. Right. A lot of times people are just like, oh, this one singular move or very like a linear way to use my beam or this or that. But Android 17 consistently showcased like different talents and different techniques that surrounded around his like his barriers and all whatnot. And I think that was really cool. So every single time he was on screen, I felt like it was something that would be uh, somewhat refreshing fight, and that's what we got. Oh in yeah, thirty one, without a doubt. Like prior to the reveal of Whis in Battle of Gods, uh, in his introduction in the series, Android Seventeen was my favorite character, like bar none. Even as a villain, I just loved him. He was yeah. just so great. Yeah. And 
there was a, a time in which, like during Dragon Ball Z, after Cell's defeated and everything, that Android 17 we know is out there somewhere doing his thing, but he's just not present. He shows up one time or so, I think, when he uh, gives his energy to Majin Buu to help, or uh, to Goku rather, to help fight Majin Buu, mm -hmm. and then kind of all said and done. Now, uh, I believe it was the Weekly Shonen Jump magazine had said, or at least what, did an interview or had some discussion with Akira Toriyama, who mm -hmm. said that Android 17 was a park ranger, he had a family, he was doing his other own thing, like, you know, yeah, out yeah, there in yeah, the world. Yeah. And Dragon Ball Super talked about that, which I thought was neat, like his his first meetup with Goku, and they're fighting like all those bad guys and trying to help save the animals. It's yeah. like, dude, this guy wanted to kill everyone. Right. Now, he's a park ranger saving wildlife, and now, on top of all that, He's able to go toe to toe with Goku, which I think mind blowing. Okay, that blew my mind. I had no idea that he was able to do that. You know why it's so amazing to me? Because it kind of reminds me of how like Walker Texas Ranger, how he's just like this <laughs> random dude, and he's just ridiculously strong for no reason at all. And it's just like, just think about it. Like, why is Android Seventeen so strong? Like, he's literally been like protecting animals from random low level poachers, and yet somehow he's able to. <laughs> Compete with someone who Who's has a god. Of the god. The powers of a god. <laughs> it's so good. It's that Chuck Norris ability. Exactly. I don't know That's what, what it I'm is. saying, man. I feel like it was almost a play on Chuck Norris. Like he's just a park ranger. It was. It was insane. And like as you said, his development was probably more fleshed out than most of the other characters. And then so then he joins like the fight, and he just dominates and kicks the crap out of pretty much everyone that he yeah. went up against in the universe, right? Yeah. And then he does this crazy selfless thing where he sacrifices himself for the greater good. And okay, this this is kind of something, I don't think we talked about this, but this was something that I thought was kind of funny. So when that episode happened, when that episode debuted that Saturday, I believe, and mm -hmm. Android 17 died, I believe it was trending worldwide on Twitter, rip Android 17. And I was like, what? And so I checked and that's, I mean, people were like saying and yeah, revealing yeah, yeah. it. Right. And so then I, you know, tweeted something about it not using my brain, and I got just destroyed on social media. Everyone was pissed that I like said something. I was like, it's trending worldwide. Hundreds of thousands of people have seen this, and I made yeah. one tweet a right. couple hours after the fact, right. and I was just eaten alive oh, yeah, for talking about his were, death. So then I retracted the tweet, deleted it, removed everything that I had said about it too. But deep inside, though, I was still really upset that Android 17 had been killed. Yeah. So when he shows up. Like, randomly to accompany Frieza of all people to not only save Goku, but to go up against Jiren, yeah. like, two against one, right. I was like, this is insane. Like, this yeah. is this is what I've wanted for so long. Right. If, if Goku is to lose against Jiren, that's cool, because I don't want Goku to win again. I want something new and fresh. Right. But if Goku is removed from the equation entirely, and you put Android 17 and Frieza together fighting right. Jiren, I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. That can happen. Jiren yeah. can lose if it's those two fighting him. Because it's right. not about like Jiren's side winning for me. I just want to see someone else win other than Goku. Right. And Android 17 and Frieza can be those people. Right. And I was stoked. I was super excited to yeah. see that. No, absolutely. And so I loved that at the end of the day, of course, um, going to the towards the end of 131, where you have Goku who tosses Frieza. And Frieza does that patent technique that he did back, all the way back in Namek, right? And then you have... He goes, goes ahead, charges Jiren. Then you say Goku going in as well, holding him down. Android 17 shooting, and like they finally are able to defeat Jiren. But the, just the way that it was, it was, it took the team to finish Jiren. Yeah. And that is something I'm perfectly okay with. Yep. I think that again, like you said, everyone's tired of that trope of just oh, it's always going to be Goku winning. Right. It's always going to be Goku winning. But now it's something where it's like this is insurmountable. Like not Goku could not do this alone. And I love that they really tried to push that message throughout this whole thing. I also like that they pushed a message that even Goku was saying too. He's like, I'm not a hero of justice or anything. Like, I'm just a martial artist and I just want to get stronger. Right. Like, that's who I am. Um, so I, I love that they've been hitting these things. So it kind of dispels that whole idea of just Goku's just like the super amazing guy and all those things. Like, he's messed up with his, uh, you know, dealing with his. Like being a good father, all those kind of things. Because but, he is not. Yeah. Of no, all absolutely. things, he is not a good father. Absolutely. Piccolo, though, he's, yeah, he's, he's the real good. one. He's pretty good. He's the real one. Yeah, all in all, I really enjoyed it. But let, let's talk about, because we've been having a lot of crazy stuff happening in Dragon Ball, like Super as a whole. But let's talk about Dragon Ball Fighters. Like Dragon They just had Final Round. And Final Round was absolutely crazy. It was basically you had the two Titans going up against each other. It was going to be Goichi and then Echo Fox, Sonic Fox. Right. Right? So these guys are going at each other, 
and everyone wanted to see this. It was basically America's best versus Japan's best for number one. There's a whole lot of people, a lot of the, some of the American FGC, they were just like, well, pretty much everyone who didn't play anime fighters, because the people who played anime fighters, they knew. They knew who Goichi was, and they knew it was going to happen. But for everyone else, they were just like, no, like, Goichi, how is he going to do anything to Sonic Box? Sonic Box is a legend. There's no way he's going to lose. And a furry, by the way. Yeah. I didn't even know this. We yeah. got to talk about this. Yeah. I need to meet him and yeah. ask him, like, yo, man, what's up with the furry thing? <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't know. I thought he was wearing like the the foxy outfit thing as like some sort of like niche little like I don't know showman card or something like yeah. that. Didn't know he was a furry. Yeah. Like legit furry. Yeah. Like legit furry. Yeah. Had no idea. He, he is. I've never seen a, a legit furry be such a baller behind like a fighting game like that. Like, whoa. Yeah. No. These these this guy is just crazy. But doesn't matter. Goichi clapped him up. It was ten four. He like he he went in and he just had trouble with uh, dealing with a lot of the pressure that he had with Adult Gohan. Adult Gohan is a character that can literally just put you like in situations where you literally have to guess multiple times, and he can do it in a very safe fashion. And it was also funny too because one of the reasons why Goichi was able to move forward and actually uh, defeat Sonic Fox in such a fashion was also utilizing Vegeta. And a lot of, uh, Sonic Fox has always gone on the record ever since this game's inception, and stated that he felt like Vegeta is not that good of a character. <laughs> he thought at bare minimum that Vegeta is just like, like oh, kind of like a cis character, and that's it, right? Are we and talking so, about just standard Super Saiyan Vegeta, or are we talking about Super, Super Saiyan, Saiyan Blue? Okay. No, Super Saiyan Vegeta. So it was just so the irony there that Goichi would come with that on his team and be able to just clap him up 10-4. So did Goichi put... Super Saiyan Vegeta on his team just because of the things that no, Sonic no, no. Fox he said? No, no, no. That was part of his team. Because gotcha. you, but it was, just, it was just justice. It was just pure justice, right? Very heavy blow for the furry community. Yes. Devastating. Yes. Devastating blow. Yes, absolutely. So then, of course, they went ahead and played in Grand Finals. Uh, Grand Finals, it went to Game 5. So it was pretty close, but uh, Goichi was able to pull that out. So, again, like, you're just having, like, people are starting to see what the top level of Dragon Ball Fighters looks like. And a lot of people were loving it. Crazy numbers. Shout out to the final round guys. They just did a lot of great things. Of course, Bifu Techie was streaming it. Just really great stuff. But then we had another set. We had another first to 10. And that happened actually at our own esports arena, in Las Vegas. So we had a show match with them. It was a first to 10. And this time around, it looked like it was gonna be a bit closer. We saw them kind of move ranks, and it was at one point in time, we actually had 6-6 six, six them, for them both. And a lot of people were like, wait, we feel like it hasn't been too, too long. I mean, it was literally last weekend. Right. So it's like, how was he able to kind of, you know, close that gap? It was almost like Goku getting destroyed, right? And then he gets the, when he first starts doing Ultra Instinct, and he just closes that insurmountable gap. And so it, I loved it because I felt like it was almost like the, just the story that we've been watching for Dragon Ball Super. And that's why it was just so cool. But then, of course, you see Goichi, then he ended up pulling away. And he ended up closing it out 10-6. So he just stopped. He didn't, he's like, all right, I'm not going to allow you to win any other game again. And so, yeah, it was, it was cr incredible. It was nuts. And the whole scene was just talking. Everyone was buzzing about it because... This is what the people wanted to see. And for this game as a whole, that's a beautiful thing when you can take some of the best in different games, and different titles, and they are going at it in one game to determine who is the best. And of course, Goichi is going to stand out on that. So awesome stuff. I know the community has been blowing up. And because of that, oh, too, yeah. tech is everywhere now. Everyone's trying to find tech like Goichi because people have been learning. Well, they're having a really great opportunity this year, too, at uh, EVO 2018. So we were talking about this earlier, but there's more entrants in the EVO 2018 tournament for Dragon Ball Fighters yeah. than any other game. Yeah. So while Goichi is definitely the standout as the world's best currently, there still is a possibility that we could see some rising stars that pop out in the high ranks as they beat other participants in that, uh, in that event. I'm really excited to see what happens there because I... I just, I just want to make sure it's perfectly clear that people understand that while Goichi and Sonic Fox are two of the world's best, like, by no means is that, like, the cap. There's a lot happening about Dragon Ball Fighters and a lot of opportunity for the community to grow yep. and merge and bridge kind of like that gap between anime 
in the fighting games, and Dragon Ball Fighters is like that pillar holding it up. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. And that's why I'm so excited to see what is going to happen, what Bandai Namco decides to do, and just like see this thing move forward. And it's like I said, going back to it, man. There's a whole lot of tech going on. Um, I think now we're really trying to see. People are now learning how do we play this game, and it's super exciting. Right now, everyone's trying to move to being more optimized. Yeah. Um, they've seen some of the damaging combos that Goichi can do, and you're seeing, you're feeling the shock waves of that now through a lot of the tech that's being found out there. More and more, people are like, okay, let's take this from training mode. Let's apply this into our game plan. You know, let let me see this in game. I if I touch you. You are gone. Your character is gone. See ya. Like, and that's a really, that's going to be a really big thing because a lot of times that's what happens in a lot of these like tag games, right? You eventually get to a point where you recognize like there's certain characters, there like point characters that you need to take out, right? And knowing to optimize these combos to get these conversions and be okay and just clear them out is huge because each character is just going to be such a valuable asset to the team. Exactly, absolutely. More, yes, totally, without a doubt, what he said two times over. Do you even know what I'm talking about? Nope, man? not even a little bit. But let's talk about some good stuff, right? We got, we got Brawly. Ooh, Brawly. A very and, big week for the game, yeah. Yes, and Bardock finally actually seen in those obscenely short trailers that Bandai seconds. Namco always has that piss me off, but man, they're so damn good. They do great at showcasing the characters, too. Like, I uh, I had just watched, uh, like, I was saving to watch the reveal trailer for Bardock in particular. I had stumbled across Broly's and I had watched that, and I was really excited. I have no idea how he's going to play or feel in my hands, but he and Bardock are both mm -hmm. going to be available this week, and I was surprised to find out that Bardock actually transforms into a Super Saiyan in-game. Now, I don't know if Bardock's ability to transform into a Super Saiyan is one of those things, kind of like how Super Saiyan Goku goes SS3 for certain movesets. Mm -hmm. I assume that's the case because they were showcasing in that teaser that Bardock can fight on his own as a non-Super Saiyan. But yeah. for them to include that transformation, I think, is kind of something worth talking about. Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, the way I saw it, I'm pretty sure that it's just only his level 3, just same thing like uh, Goku. So um, I think it's a nice touch. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, for all of us who watched um, just, like, Bardock's story, like, just to see that moment, it's, like, it's so it's super cool to see him. And he just looks cool because, obviously, he's, like, cool characters always have bandanas, man. So, like... Bandanas and yep. uh, T-scars across yep. the face oh, every always. time. Yep. Every time. Gotta that have that Instant scar. cool guy, right? So everyone wants to play him. Um, I Except really, Yamcha. I really, yeah. Oh, gosh, Yamcha, you're terrible. <laughs> but, but, like... <laughs> I, I think they're look, they look really good. Um, I think that a lot of people have been kind of craving a character like Brawly. How they're all going to fit into the metagame you yeah. know, remains to be seen. Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely excited for those characters. Broly's sheer power and energy, I feel like, while we haven't seen all the details of how they play yet, I feel like those two are going to be uh, kind of his more advantageous, advantageous points. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like uh, he's probably going to be slow. But I don't know. I mean... They have a good job, I think, of writing in the stats in relation to the characters and how they perform in the mm -hmm. manga and anime and the source material and all that. So I'm curious to see how they want to take Broly that way. But we talked about this before, much like, uh, like okay, so one thing that I did sort of kind of hear about fighting games prior to having this discussion at all is that a lot of times players will seek out slender or even female characters because they have a smaller physique, which means their hitboxes are smaller than, say, like a bulky male. So I feel like that could be something that might put Broly at a minor disadvantage because he's so much bigger than pretty much every other playable character. Yeah. So his hitboxes are obviously going to be larger. Yeah. I don't know how that exactly translates well into Dragon Ball Fighters. That'll mm -hmm. be revealed this week when they're available for download. But I'm curious to see what the uh, final product is in Ingenuity regarding how he operates as a character because I know for sure I'm picking up that DLC pack because I want both those characters really bad. Yeah. So, again, like we talked about before, just like, so, it, yeah, he's just really going to have a large hurtbox, and because of that, it's going to be, like, he's going to have to deal with things. But usually big characters also have big hitboxes, too. Sure. So, you know, he's going to have that kind of range. So it really remains to be seen how um, he's actually going to operate in the game. But, you know, speaking of operations, right, I think it's time for us to play some matches, man. Because, I do. Yes. Because you know what? We can't go into the DLC pack and just be trash. Continue to be trash. I was saying continue is, to be trash yeah. because we're probably... Uh, let's be honest. I'm probably going to go in and still be trash, lowly level yes, trash. But we're we're, we're going to change that. That is the goal. You and I are going to learn the game together, and 
we've got just a special guest to do it, man. Yeah, who are we going to have to help us become better at playing this game? Well, I'm not going to tell you, and I'm not going to tell them until we go to the segment. So, All right, well, hopefully it's someone who you. knows fighting games quite well because I could learn a lesson or a dozen, two you, dozen, you could learn a lot of lessons. lessons. Uh, I'm going to go sit over there lessons. right now. I'm going to go play. I don't know this. anything about this. Yeah, All that. You don't. Oh, Dragon Ball Fighters is very hard. Why, why did it's, it's not easy. Why did I even sign up for this? I'm not, I'm not good at the game. Oh, God. But I want to be good at the game. Bam, bam. I, I want to. Can I do the thing? Can I do the gong? We've done the. We've done the thing. We're gonna go to the gameplay thing. But I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit the gong. Okay. All right. We're gonna go do. We're gonna do the thing. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. 